Do online leads for mortgage loan officers suck or is it actually possible to make a lot of money and close a lot of deals using online leads? In this video, we're gonna take you through a training that up until now was only for our clients, but we're releasing it publicly for the first time. This is gonna show you everything that loan officers are having success with online leads are doing to close them and the mistakes that people are making that keep them from closing and end up wasting a lot of money on online marketing. Let's go ahead and jump into it. What's up guys? In this video, we're gonna talk about the dark truth about online leads. Now this is one of the trainings that we have our clients go through because it's very important to know exactly what is the difference between online leads and other types of leads and how to work them. And a lot of people don't know this and waste a lot of money. But let's go ahead and get into it. And I hope you guys like my dramatic title, The Dark Truth. There's two main types of leads, referrals and online leads. Obviously, that's an overgeneralization, but for this, we're just gonna say there's two types of leads. So referrals are lower volume, more unpredictable, easier to work with, of course easier to get across the line. You don't have to have as much skill, right? With online leads, they're higher volume, they're more predictable, and you do need a different skill set. And a lot of times, people who've only worked with referrals, they haven't developed the skill set yet. So whenever they try to work with online leads using the same skills, then they don't have a lot of success. And it's a completely different skill set that you need. So the big question is, do online leads just suck? The answer is yes, if you don't know how to work with them because we obviously use online leads for our business and there's a lot of big companies that use online marketing to generate leads that have a lot of success there's also probably even more people in the mortgage industry that waste a lot of money with online leads and don't get anywhere that's the sad truth if you do know how to work with online leads you can make a lot of money and just like I just said there's people who are getting consistent deals every month with online marketing with social media marketing so why are they getting those results consistently and then so many other people are not and knowing that there's people that are consistently closing deals from it we just need to figure out what are they doing that the others are not doing and if we can figure that out then we can start to more predictably get deals from online marketing because obviously if it's repeatable for them then it's repeatable for everybody we just have to figure out how to do it right and that's what kind of what we're going to go through in this training now we're going to start with an example that is not mortgage related just to illustrate a point It'll illustrate an idea and you'll know what i'm talking about here in a bit for this example we are going to say we're running an ad for personal trainers, right? So the ideal client for this personal trainer, what they want to do is they want to lose 30 pounds in 30 days. They want to get fit. They want to get a six pack, right? Get a six pack in 30 days. Those are the things that they want, right? Let's say that ad generates a new lead for that trainer. Again, this is what they want. Lose 30 pounds in 30 days, get fit, get a six pack. What they don't want is to go to the gym. They don't want to work out. They don't want to eat healthy. Now, obviously these things are things that they have to do to get that end result, but they don't want to do those things. What they desire is losing weight and being healthier. The right questions that the trainer should ask this lead are, why do you want a six pack? When do you want it? What happens if you don't lose the 30 pounds? Questions about what they desire. And then they give them a plan, right? We could totally get you that six pack in probably about 30 days. Now the first thing that I'm gonna need to do is just go get a gym membership. We're gonna start eating healthier. I'm gonna make you a diet plan and we're gonna work out three days per week. And they're like, awesome, sounds good because I want the six pack. So they go to the gym to get the gym membership. This is the lead, he walks in, says, I want a gym membership. And this is the receptionist and they say, fill this out. Now how much skill did this receptionist need to use? Not a lot, right? They're essentially an order taker at this point. Not saying there's no skill, but the trainer kind of did all of that work for them. Now we're gonna go through another similar example, but this is a new lead for a real estate agent because real estate agents are a huge part of mortgage loan officers' businesses. So real estate agent gets a new lead. The right questions that the real estate agent would ask, what size house do you want? What neighborhood are you wanting it in? What schools are you wanting to be close to if you have kids? How the backyard for your dog? And by the nature of the real estate agent's job, they ask these questions anyway. These are the things that the lead cares about, right? And then the agent gives the plan. Here's the plan. Talk to John and get a pre-approval letter. John's our hypothetical mortgage loan officer. And let's start looking at homes in that neighborhood at that price range with a big backyard for your dogs, right? Close to that school. So they've asked all the questions about what size house and got them all excited and bought in and invested. And then they give them the plan, right? Now the new lead comes over, says, I want to apply for a loan. Here's our loan officer in this situation, John, fill this out. John in this scenario, maybe he had to do a little bit of work, maybe answer some questions and find 
find the right loan or whatever for this lead. But in terms of actual selling skills, you didn't really have to do much. Now that we know the right questions, here's the wrong questions. When do you want to start? When do you want to join the gym? What questions do you have about eating healthy? When do you want to work out? Those are the wrong questions because they don't care about those things. The lead is going to be gone. We want to talk to them about what they want first and then make the plan. You can consider yourself like the gym membership in this, right? They don't want what you have. They don't want the gym membership. You're just part of the plan to get there. A loan isn't what they want, the house is. So with that being said, the wrong questions to ask your prospects, if you're doing online lead gen direct to consumer, the wrong questions asked would when do you want to apply? What questions do you have about getting pre-approved? When do you want to submit an application? And even going as far as just starting out asking their credit score and stuff because you haven't gotten them emotionally invested into it. You haven't gotten them excited. You haven't asked them about anything that they want. Now, some of you are watch this and you may know this stuff, but most LOs don't know that there's a different way to handle these. But these are the wrong questions to ask. So when you're doing direct to consumer online marketing, one of the biggest mindset shifts that you need to get is you are playing the role of the real estate agent as well as your normal loan officer role, right? You are the gym membership. Nobody wants you. They want the end result. The right questions that you'll ask are what size house do you want? What neighborhood? What schools for your kids? Oh, you have a dog. What's his name? Sparky. Cool. Do you want a big backyard for Sparky? Do you want to be close to a dog park for Sparky? Those are the things that they care about. And I see many fellows, they start running paid ads and then they generate a massive amount of leads. And these are people that have shown interest that based off the answers to their survey are really well qualified. And then they get them on a phone and they're like, all right, cool. So what credit score, DTI, all this stuff. And then they send them an application and they don't convert a lot. But the ones who do this, these are, this is what the LOs that are having success with online marketing, this is what they're doing. They're asking, they're playing the role of the real estate agent as well as the role of the loan officer. They're asking them about the house they want, the neighborhoods. They're getting them excited. And then they ask them about all the boring stuff. Talk to them about what's important again, get important to them, get them excited, and then make the plan, right? Now, in another video in the future, in one of the trainings we do, I talk about how to, the verbiage and the transitions between that and the plan. I don't think I cover it in this but just it's part of the plan. Or you're part of the plan. You're not the thing that they want. This beautiful little graph here with these little dots, this is meant to show on a spectrum the types of leads that you can get. So first, over here on the right, these are the easiest. Over here on the left, these are the hardest. So on the right, these are the easiest. These are the lowest skill required, these leads are. Their referrals like part of the plan. So when I say part of the plan, that just means a real estate agent has already got them bought in, they're ready to go, and they've just been like, first I need you to go to John to get a pre-approval letter. There's not much sell skill involved in that at all, right? Now let's go over, get a little harder. Easier, right? Not easiest, but easier. Requires a little bit of skill and these are referrals. So maybe past client referrals, friends, family. These are people that they already trust you because they've gotten referred to you by somebody that they trust. That trust transfers and online that doesn't happen because nobody's referring them, right? So they already trust you to an extent, but they may need to be sold on, is this the right time to buy? Should I wait and rent another year? It requires some skill, but they since you they trust you already, it's a lot easier to work with them than the other types. Referrals that come from a plan, referrals, and then the next, which are in the middle, these are more of a challenge and these require a little bit more skill. These are social leads. So if you do any type of content marketing and people reach out wanting to buy a home, they seen your content. So they do trust you to an extent. They like you or they wouldn't have reached out, but they're not as warm and hot as the referrals from agents. So you might have to do a little bit more persuading. You might have to do a little bit more follow-up to get in touch with them. But in most cases, these are pretty easy to work with as well. Just not as easy as these over here. Now let's go a little harder. This is online, not even online lead generation, but just direct to consumer in general. This is gonna start requiring some skill because now you have people who have indicated interest. They've answered a survey with their credit score, how much they have for a down payment, all that good stuff and submitted their info and agreed to be contacted. So that shows intent, but they're probably more skeptical. So if you've ever opted into an online ad, you probably opted in with some skepticism when they started contacting you. You're probably more skeptical than trusting. It's just part of the online marketing game. And with these people, since they're more skeptical, since they're, they don't have that trust with you yet, it does require more skill. You have to develop the rapport and build the trust, build the authority to get them to convert. And then the last is, now these are the hardest. This is where the most skill is required. That's cold. So this is, if you're sending out thousands 
tens of mailers or if you're sending out tens of thousands of cold emails or doing cold calls or door knocking. The difference between this and the online lead gen, the people in the cold area, they did not indicate any interest. If you're cold calling, then in cold, I define cold calling as calling somebody who never showed interest before or maybe somebody who showed interest a long time ago and the time frame is just so long that they may be not have shown interest in this moment. If you're cold calling, they haven't shown interest, they don't know who you are, they're not expecting your call, right? Same thing with door knocking, right? You're knocking on somebody's door. They didn't show any interest. They didn't agree for you to come to knock on their door. Now, the crazy thing is people do have success in this area right here. And these are the people that have the highest amount of skill on being able to take somebody from not knowing you at all, not being interested at all, all the way to the closing table. Now that is a powerful skill to have. And not a lot of people have that. And with what we do, we actually, we don't require you to have that, right? We're right here. But I've always said that I think one of the most powerful skills that you can have is taking somebody from not knowing you to not having shown any interest to a deal because then no matter what happens, you'll never be poor because as long as you have a phone, heck, as long as you have feet and a hand to knock on doors, you can go get deals. It might take a lot, but you know that you can make money. A lot of people don't have that skill and they rely on the economy or other people sending them referrals to, or even platforms, right? If you're doing content marketing or online marketing, then you're relying on a platform, Facebook or TikTok or anything's probably not gonna go down. But you're with this, this presentation isn't about this, but it's just a big belief. I have a one-year-old daughter that I'm gonna instill that skill into her so that she's never broke like I was growing up. But okay, so the question is, why are many LOs hurting? And you probably know the answer to this by now, but it's because they've stayed here their entire careers. They've been basically an order taker for from their referral partners. Now, that's not really a bad thing. It is in a way, but when the market was great, rates were low, and you were getting a tons of referrals from realtor partners and from past clients, you may not have had more much time to do any of this other stuff. Now, I would argue to say that since you were relying on just those two areas, that it might've been a good idea to start hiring assistants under you and maybe build a channel so you could have some more consistent lead flow. But I understand it, right? You're probably swimming in money. There's referrals coming at you from every direction possible. And the problem is as rates went up and the market got tougher, you're not getting a lot of referrals anymore. Agents aren't getting a lot of deals. They're not getting a lot of leads. Everybody's scared of the market. The prospects are scared. Is it a good time to buy? Should I just keep renting? Home prices are high and rates are high. Now, the people who are who have been relying on referrals, they don't have any of these other things set up. They're just dry, like their, their lead flow is gone for the most part. Maybe they get some company leads every once in a while because they're company markets. But again, you're not in control of that, the company is. As you notice over here, on the right, you have less control. Over here on the left, you have more control. Over here on the right, if you're relying on that, those are more, more vulnerable to outside forces. Over here on the left, these are less vulnerable forces. Over here on the right, if you're just taking referrals and taking company leads, you are more of an employee. If you are taking ownership of your lead generation, and I would still take company leads and try to get as much referral partners as possible, but you'd wanna have more consistent channels as well. You're more of a business over here. This is what businesses do to scale. The more of an employee, they mainly do loans and they network, get coffee, stuff like that more of a business. They do they do loans, but they also market, they advertise, they hire people. They're constantly leveling up their skills. They're networking efficiently and effectively, build a referral network, follow-up systems, automate, and a lot more. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it, right? Now, your goal is to move along. You don't want to give up the referral partners, but you do want to move along this spectrum and try to get, you don't have to get all of them, but you don't want to be reliant on referrals and things outside of your, your control, right? Most people, most LOs start here because it's easy. They go out, realtor coffees, right? It's so easy to work with a referral. Like you just have to seduce the agent into working with you, right? And then most people start here because they're hungry. They'll do the cold calls and they'll do the, probably not door knocking, but cold email. And then, but the best, even if you're starting over here, as long as you gain the skills, you can move across this spectrum. I'm not saying you have to make content or anything, but you can move across this spectrum right here and gain the skills and you'll have a more predictable lead generation system. You'll be getting leads from all kinds of different areas and you won't be as vulnerable to outside forces. So the good news is you don't have to do this stuff right here. You don't have to cold call if you don't want to. Some people do, and but and then most LOs are here, right? You just have to gain the skills to convert here. If you can convert online leads, then you'll never have a lead problem again because it becomes just math at that point. 
right? If you know I put this much money into the system and I get this much out, if I put a dollar in, I can get two dollars out or I can get a dollar fifty out. Then how many if there's a machine that did that for every dollar you put in, you got a dollar seventy five out. How many dollars would you put in that machine? Any answer other than as many as I could is I don't understand it. More skilled than most. If you're here, you're more skilled than most LOs. And we've seen a lot of LOs. We help them now gain these skills, but you will be more skilled than most LOs if you have the skill to convert online leads. And again, these aren't super cold. These are just people have shown interest. They want to buy a house. They've even answered a survey and agreed to be contacted. You're going to be more skilled than those. You're going to be more predictable and you can actually build a business. Now, just because you're a 1099, doesn't mean you're a business just because you have an LLC really doesn't mean you're a business like legally yeah but if you're the only one working in it how much of a business is it you, you just created a job for yourself that you have more control over how do you get there that's the big question you got to think like a business owner a big part of being a business owner and I'm sure that you'll agree is acquiring skills so that you can get deals anytime during good markets during bad markets and there's a lot of skills in business right there's marketing there's there's advertising, there's copywriting, there's persuasion and sales and closing. All the all these are different skills. And then on top of all that, you have to you have to work on being a loan officer and knowing your loan programs and all that stuff. There is a lot of stuff to it. That's why a lot of people don't do it. And don't rely on just one lead type and don't try to sell the gym membership. Don't try to sell the loan. That's the that's like the big point of this whole video is don't try to sell the loan, sell the house. Even though you're not a real estate agent, which in this market I would probably get my license as a real estate agent too if you could but don't try to sell the house sell or scratch that don't try to sell the loan sell the house nobody wants a loan everybody knows that they need it obviously but if you are immediately talking to people that you got through any type of direct consumer cam campaign and you're asking them all right cool so what credit score how much money do you have saved all right is this your first time buying a home all right cool i'm gonna go ahead and send you over an application and fill that out and then we'll get you connected with a real estate agent don't do that if you if that's how you handle it you're not going to close anything and if you're not open to changing the way you handle it don't invest in online leads this is coming from a we have an agency that does that that helps loan officers with their online marketing and converting those deals and I'm telling you if you're not open to changing the way you approach this do not sign up with us or anybody because you will waste money but if you are open to learning the skills to convert people from online then I think it's a great idea to add this to your business because you can turn it on when you want you can turn it higher you can turn it lower you can turn it off and it's consistent remember use questions that speak to their dreams their what their benefits are and what they want right some tips if they have kids what schools do you want your kids to go to do you want your do you want a house in that school zone because people are passionate about their kids of course if they have a dog awesome i have pets myself is it and i would always ask their name what's your pet's name sparky oh cool i have a german shepherd his name's tom is a big backyard important for you so that your dog has space that's called you build a little rapport and you're talking to what they care about now as a loan officer, you don't really need to know if they want a backyard. That's not part of your requirements for getting a loan for them. I know that, but it has an indirect impact on how many people you will convert because what's going to happen is if you don't approach it like this, you're going to send applications to people and they're never going to fill them out. And you're going to be like, why can't anybody, can I get anybody to fill out these applications? These leads suck. Online leads don't work. Yeah, they they have good credit scores and income, but they never fill out the application. What's going on? It's because of the way you're handling the call. So other tips, where do you work how close do you want to be to work this is something that they would care about are you open to other areas or cities that are within however many minute drive this brings me to I almost forgot about this a mistake I you, now we they don't make them anymore because we handle this with in trainings from the very beginning but if you have a lead come in and they have a certain income that qualifies for a certain price of home and they're saying that they want to buy in an area that is not you're not gonna be able to find a home for them for that price range we for some reason we would see a lot of LOs just say that was a bad lead. But the reality is people are open to other areas and suburbs. You just have to, one, you have to build a little trust and show some authority. And one of the main ways you show authority is through the questions that you ask and the feedback that you give people. And then you can tell them, hey, with that your income, we're probably not gonna be able to find anything in that area. And if we do, it's probably gonna be like a shack. And I don't, based off of our conversation, I don't think that's what you want, is that right? You're gonna be like, yeah, I don't wanna live in a shack. Awesome, and you definitely don't wanna keep wasting your money on rent either, right? Nah, screw rent. I hate my rent. I hate my landlord. Awesome. So for just an extra 15 minute drive, 20 minute drive, whatever, we can get you in the house that you're looking for, or at least a house really close to it. And you can be a homeowner. You could all that, whatever your spiel is, and we can get it 
right now. Like I can get you pre-qualified for an amount for that area, but the area that you're looking at right now, you're not gonna be able to get it. And then a lot of people will be like, yeah, let's go ahead and see what we can find. But a lot of LOs don't do that. It blows my mind. Sorry, I'm starting to rant, but it blows my mind. So what's your perfect dream house, location, etc.? Just asking about their dream house and locations. Here's some hacks. So get them talking about something that's important to them. If you counted how many times during this entire thing I've said that, it's probably gonna be a lot and it's because it's so important. So get them to talk more, preferably. If you can get them to open up and talk more, this is a conversation hack. People like to talk about themselves and and this isn't just an low problem, it's just a people problem, especially in sales. People will start rambling on about like their program or their loans or how long they business, whatever it is, right? They don't care about that, just let them talk. Ask them questions that get them to talk and face-to-face -face when possible. So when you're doing online marketing, a lot of times you'll be doing stuff over Zoom. Let me rephrase that. A lot of times you want to be doing things over Zoom. Most people don't do it for some reason. And if you can get face-to-face, -face, a Zoom, Google Meet, whatever platform you wanna use, then you will have a lot more success. You will convert a lot more people is because face to face, it's a, it's an instant hack to building trust, like automatically. One Zoom call is equal to 50 phone calls. Those numbers probably aren't exact, but you get my point. If you can just hop on one Zoom call with these people or send them one selfie video or something, let them see your face, I would say Zoom, then you will convert a lot more of your online. This isn't just online, this, this is any lead. And that's why face, like if you can be in person, even better, obviously, right? In person beats Zoom. But if you can't be in person, Zoom is your next best bet. And then this is more of a mindset shift, but don't be an order taker, be an advisor. Your goal is just to help advise them on, you find out their goals, right? Are they wanting to build wealth? Are they wanting to get a house for their family? Whatever it is, find out their situation and then you advise them. Going back to what we talked about before, I'm not looking, if somebody says they're looking in an area that they can't afford, I'm going to be an advisor. I'm gonna show my authority and be an advisor. Be like, you can't do that, but you, these other areas are gonna be a good option. Not an order taker. Order taker would be like, all right, so you know, we're not, you're not able to qualify yet, but I'll put you in my system and send you some random emails every now and then. That is a sure way to not convert anything. Be an advisor. And we're gonna end the entire thing with this beautiful little image. And what this means is anytime that you are doing any direct to consumer marketing and you get them over text, the primary goal of, of the text, the conversation in text, is to get them to a phone call. The goal is not to get them to apply for a loan over text. You won't get any. You might get one out of 500, but by then you've wasted a lot of money and you're not gonna be ROI positive. You want to use text to get to the phone call if you do that so you don't try to get them to look at your website you don't try to qualify them over text too hard maybe one or two questions but the primary goal you can think of it as the thing that you have to sell when you're texting is the phone call you're just selling a phone call with you you need to convince them and persuade them to get on the call get on the phone with you and then from the phone I would try to get them to zoom so that you can build more trust and rapport ten times faster than if you did a phone call but that's really it guys that's the full presentation about the dark truth of online leads if again I want to go back to what I said earlier if you are open to developing the skill set to convert any direct consumer leads we would love to talk with you and we've left a link down in the description to so that you can find out more about what we do and how we add three to five new loans to loan officers pipelines every month but even if it's not us if you sign up with anybody that does this type of stuff or if you try to do it yourself then I highly recommend that you take this into consideration you need to learn that skill it's a different skill if you've never done it you don't know it but you probably will pick it up pretty quick you just have to train on it so hope that helps in the meantime I highly recommend you check out this video right here where we talk about three of the best ways to get leads and then I'll see you then